Ooh, today's gonna be fun. We are talking about one of my favorite things. No, scratch that. Two of my favorite things. HomeKit automations and series shortcuts. Now, this is gonna be a very basic level introductory type video. We'll discuss when to use automations and when to use shortcuts and kind of what the differences are. And we're gonna have some fun setting up a few examples to show you how it all works and hopefully give you some ideas for creating your own automations and shortcuts. Stick around to the end because I've got a special tip that if you didn't already know about, you're not gonna to wanna to miss. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday right here. All right, so in my opinion, one of the ultimate benefits of creating a smart home is the ability to automate things. You know, it's kind of funny because often people are like, why would you want smart lights? I don't want to take out my phone every time I want to turn the lights on or off. Well, me either, but I do want those lights to come on automatically in the morning or maybe when I snooze my alarm or maybe when I come home after work, just to have those lights and things come on automatically is awesome. And really that's just the beginning. You can do so much more when we start to talk about series shortcuts and really get into that stuff. Okay, so first let's define the two shortcuts and automations. Automations make it easy to trigger your smart home devices or shortcuts based on the time of day, your location, or various other things like, you know, when you connect to CarPlay. There are actually two kinds of automations that we can create, personal automations and home automations. Now I'm gonna discuss the differences in the two here in just a second. So if that's automations, what exactly is Siri shortcuts? Well, in a nutshell, Siri shortcuts allow you to do multiple things with just one tap or by asking Siri. So you can create a shortcut, for example, uh, that with the tap of a button gets you directions home, gets you estimated time of arrival, maybe send a message to your spouse that you're on the way and starts playing your favorite podcast. So we can do all those things with just really the one tap of the button or by telling Siri to run your shortcut. Now, really the possibilities with shortcuts are endless. Now today I'm really gonna be focusing on some very simple shortcuts uh, that relate to HomeKit and smart home automations, but if you really wanna dive a little deeper with shortcuts, feel free to check out my automations and shortcuts playlist. And also we did discuss home automations briefly in my uh, first video of this Siri, HomeKit 101, getting started. So check that out if you haven't already or if maybe this video is moving a little bit fast. We're gonna cover a lot and we're actually gonna create some simple automations and shortcuts today. So I will put chapters down below as always in case you wanna skip around to any specific parts of this video. All right, so first of all, let's open the Shortcuts app. Now, the Shortcuts app comes pre-installed these days on all iOS devices. Along the bottom, you'll see three tabs, My Shortcuts, the Automations tab, and the Gallery tab. In the My Shortcuts tab, you can see any shortcuts that you've created and you can tap the plus icon to begin creating a new one. Now, we'll come back to the Automations tab in just a second. The Galleries tab may be a good place to start if you're brand new to shortcuts. You'll see some categories up top to explore. You'll see automation suggestions, which could be a really good place to start also. These are based on your daily usage and habits with your phone and you know can be great candidates for things to automate. We'll also see shortcuts from apps that I have installed on my phone. Now let's get back to that Automations tab. Here there are gonna be two types of automations like I mentioned earlier personal automations and home automations. Let me explain the difference. Personal automations are those that will run on your personal device, like your iPhone or your iPad. And then we have home automations. These are actually the same automations that you see in the home app, like we discussed in that previous HomeKit 101 video. This is just another place where you can access and create those automations. And the big difference between home automations versus personal automations is that the home automations have to run from your HomeKit hub and not your personal devices like your phone. So this means that you'll be much more limited in the actions which are available when creating a home automation or a shortcut. 
Make sense? I know it's a little confusing. Let me show you what I mean. If I tap on a new automation and choose personal automation, first I gotta choose my trigger, which is all based again on my personal device. And then I tap add action. You can see I have access to the entire library of actions that can run from my phone. Now let's go back and I'll create a new home automation. I'll just tap a sensor detect something. And we'll choose my back door. We'll say when that door opens, choose next. But if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this option to convert to shortcut. So if I tap this and now if I try to add an action, you'll see I'm much more limited in the actions that are available. I can't text people or use other apps on my phone because like I said, this type of automation is running on my HomeKit hub. But this does give us some really nice added functionality like scripting. For example, we can use if then actions or wait actions and combine this type of stuff with our HomeKit accessories for these home automations. For example, I'll create an automation in a minute that will flash a HomeKit light a number of times when our garage door is open. That's something that we can't do without converting this automation to a shortcut. So I hope that helps explain the different types of automations and shortcuts that you can create and maybe when you'd want to use one over another. So let's dive in a little deeper. First, let's create a couple of regular shortcuts and personal automations, then we'll create some home automations. Let's start with just a regular shortcut. So I'm gonna create a shortcut that will give me options, essentially a menu to choose from. This is intended for me to use on the nights when I'm up later than my wife and it's time for me to go to bed when she has actually already gone to sleep. The first option will be to turn off the lights and lock down the house. The second option will be to turn on or off my bedside lamp to this night light setting so I can see if I need to. And I'll make a third option that will do all of the above in case I'm working my way into the bedroom and I want to do it all at the same time. Let's jump in. All right, so let's go ahead and just tap on a new shortcut. Let's tap add action and I can type in choose from menu and there you go. We see it right here, choose from menu. It's actually one of the scripting actions and I can tap the info icon to see more about it. Presents a menu and runs different actions based on which menu item is chosen. Add that to my shortcut and there you go. Uh, we have a optional prompt that we can type in here. Let's just type in good night just so you can kind of see what that will look like. And here is our options. We'll do option one, turn off the lights and lock down the house. All right, option two, we'll call it night light because it's gonna go into that night light mode. And then I actually wanna add a third option that's gonna run both in case maybe I'm going to the bedroom and I wanna do both at the same time. So we'll just type in both. And you can see that created these options down here. Now I can add actions to each option that will run based on which one I choose. So the first one, we're looking for the home app. And here's the actions you get with the home app. And I'm gonna do control Watley home. I actually need to grab this and pull it under that first one. Now I can tap on the scenes and accessories that I wanna control if this option is chosen. I have a scene already called All Lights Out. This turns out all my main lights. That'll be perfect for this, so I'll just go ahead and use, utilize that scene. And I also wanna add my security system, okay? So I'm gonna tap Next, and now I want to make sure this is set to Arm. So this will arm my security system and turn all the lights out. Choose Done. And that's it. So if I choose this, essentially that's just kind of running some HomeKit accessories and setting uh, that right there. Next. We're gonna do this bedside nightlight now. I have a nightlight uh, by my bed that is made by Yeelight and actually has some features that I can utilize with the Yeelight app that I don't get with the home app. For example, it has a nightlight mode that turns the lamp really, really dim, way below 1%, something you can't do with the home app in HomeKit. So I'm actually gonna utilize that. Uh, the Yeelight app does support Siri shortcuts, so I'll be able to utilize that here. So let's tap on new action and I'm gonna look for that. Here we go, here's a couple of the scenes that I've set up through the Yeelight app. Again, cause that app does support series shortcuts. So uh, it should be this first one here. Tap that and you can see there, it does show me bedside nightlight is the scene that will run when, uh, when I choose this. So I'm actually gonna turn off show when run cause I don't want it to show me. I just want it to run when I choose this and I can pull this 
up under bedside nightlight and that's it. So now if I choose bedside nightlight from that menu, it's going to run that action right there. And finally we have both. Now since this is really just duplicating these, the easiest way to do this is if I tap on that right there, that action, I can choose duplicate and just pull this underneath that final option there. I can do the same thing with this one, tap there, choose duplicate, pull this under, boom, now we're done. Now if I choose both, it's gonna run both of these actions. So now we can give it a quick test run and see how it works. If I choose play, there we go, we get our choose from menu, it says good night, that is our prompt that we chose. I can turn off lights and lock down the house, turn on the bedside nightlight, or do both. So I'll tap bedside nightlight because I don't want to arm my house right now. So tap that and you'll see it'll jump to that option and it'll run those actions in there. So I don't know if you saw that, but that's how it works. So uh, we're good to go there. It's all set up. Now I'll choose next. Now I can name my shortcut. I'm going to name this nighttime, nighttime shortcuts. All right, and you can choose the little icon here, like this one right there, choose done, nighttime shortcuts, boom, done, good to go. Now right there you can see, tap that, it's gonna run my shortcuts. And that's it, now I can run this shortcut from the shortcuts app or from my widget areas. Um, I can also use Siri to run this shortcut, but I probably won't do that in this case because my wife will be asleep every time I want to use this one. So you can see shortcuts are basically a way to run multiple actions all at once. All right, so let's keep it moving and now we're going to look at automations. I'm going to create a personal automation and a home automation just so you can see the difference. Let's tap on new automation and we'll create a new personal automation. Again, here we can see all the different triggers that we can use for our automation, time of day, alarms, sleep settings, location, car play, email messages, Apple Watch workouts, NFC, the list goes on. So let's just start with a simple one, but one of my personal favorites. When my alarm is snoozed, we'll set my good morning scene. And maybe let's turn on our bedroom Apple TV and open up the Spectrum app, which is what I use for watching live TV. That way I can check out the local news first thing in the morning. So this must be done as a personal automation since it's using the alarms on my phone as the trigger. Plus it's actually using the remote app in the background, which is on my phone to control the Apple TV. All right, so let's create that, per let's tap on personal automation. And again, we're gonna choose uh, when the alarm is snooze. So I'm going to tap alarm and let's choose snooze and you can choose which alarm here. I'm going to use, you can choose any of your existing alarms, your wake up alarm or any alarm. I'm going to choose my wake up alarm, tap next. So what I wanted to do is run a few actions. First is that home kit scene. So again, we're going to tap home, looking for control Watley home and I want to run my good morning home kit scene. So it's going to do that. Next, I want it to wake up my Apple TV and it actually uses the remote app built into iOS to do that. So I'll tap done there. Let's choose remote. And there we go, the Apple TV remote. And here's all the actions that we can use here in our shortcuts from the Apple TV remote app. I'm going to look for Wake Apple TV. And here you can choose which Apple TV if you have more than one. Bedroom is the one that I want. Okay, so that's good to go. Now I'm going to open the Spectrum app on my Apple TV, which is what I use to watch live TV. To do that, you need to look for the open app on Apple TV action. And there we go. First, you need to, again, choose which Apple TV. We're going to choose bedroom. And now you can tap that and you can choose which app you want to open. And for me, like I said, we're looking for Spectrum TV. Boom, open Spectrum TV on the bedroom Apple TV. Create next. There you go. You can see when my wake up alarm is snoozed, it's going to do all of these things. Set my good morning scene, wake my Apple TV, and open that Spectrum app on the Apple TV. I want to turn off Ask Before Running. 
It's gonna give me this little prompt, yes, I understand. I don't want it to ask. That way when I snooze my alarm, first thing in the morning, these things are gonna happen. My lights are gonna come on, my TV's gonna wake up, everything's gonna happen automatically. Done. And there you go, works like a charm. Finally, let's create a home automation and convert it to a shortcut. We'll create an automation that flashes a light when a sensor detects something or maybe when another uh, home kit accessory is triggered. Now in this demonstration, we're gonna pretend that this bulb right here is a desk light. So um, if I'm sitting at my desk, I'll have my desk light on, otherwise I never will. And this automation is going to let me know it's going to flash this bulb every time my garage door is open, but only if the bulb is already on. Otherwise, it won't do anything. So here we can go, we can create this automation from the automations tab here in our home app, or you can do it in the shortcuts app under the automation tab here. Either way, let's do it here. I will tap this time, create a home automation and I'm looking to create an automation around my garage door. So we're gonna say an accessory is controlled. I'm looking for my garage door. All right, so I know I have multiple garage doors here, as you can see, probably looks crazy, but I'm always kind of testing and moving things around. So uh, that's why sometimes it looks crazy and I have multiple garage doors, but this right here is my main garage door. I know that, so I'm gonna tap that and I'm gonna choose next. And when the garage door opens and we're going to do uh, now you can also say maybe during specific times or maybe when i am home i don't need to do this because we're going to also use that um, make sure that i'm sitting at my desk so we don't really need that let's choose next and i'm going to need to convert this to a shortcut you can see this down here that way we'll have some more scripting options that we can use other than just turning devices on or off so i'm going to go convert to shortcut all right now it's going to automatically put this in here because it's a home automation we're essentially setting up uh, but i'll actually save that i can use that later but here's our options. You can see we're a lot more limited in what we have, as I was saying earlier, because this is a home automation, essentially. Uh, and this will run on our HomeKit hub, not our personal device. But this is the one I want. I actually want this if statement. Okay, so if something happens, run this. Otherwise, it'll do something else. I'm gonna actually pull this right here under if. So we're gonna say if this bulb is on then we're going to create that automation that's gonna flash the lamp so what i'm looking for is that light again and i'm going to turn it off so it's already on so i'm gonna turn it off and then on and then we're going to repeat it a few times so we'll turn it off what i want to do is actually a wait action here so i'm gonna pull this up here and we'll wait one second then we'll turn it back on. Control Watley Home. Look for my light. Now we're gonna turn it back on. Okay, and pull this under here. I'm gonna do another wait action for another second. So we need it to repeat, so there's actually a repeat action we can do. Let's type repeat. That's a, one of the scripting actions. Now I need to pull this up to the top underneath that if statement and everything needs to go within this repeat action. So let's pull all these actions that we created inside that repeat. Okay, there we go. And let's repeat this, let's say four times. It's gonna turn it off, wait a second, turn it on, wait a second and repeat four times. And that last one right here was turn it on, so it will leave it, should leave it in the on position. Let's test. Again, the light is off, so it's not gonna do anything because of that if statement. So let me turn it on. I'm gonna turn it on lower. So hopefully you can still see. Okay, now let's test it out. One, you see it going through and repeating those actions. 
and then it's done. Now we can leave it at that. If you want, you can add a nothing action, which sometimes I'll do this. So otherwise it will do nothing and that's it. So I'll choose next and you can see here when garage door opens, it's going to run that shortcut. So when the garage door opens, it's going to check to make sure this light is on. If it is on, it's going to flash it five times and leave it on. If it's off, it's not going to do anything. So that is why we would want to use shortcuts to do something like this. You can't do this in just your regular automations. You're going to have to convert it to a shortcut. So there you go. And you can go even further if you want and play an alarm or different sounds on your HomePod as a part of this automation as well. As you can see, automations and shortcuts are really cool and the things you can do with them are just incredible. I'm only smart enough to scratch the surface of this stuff, but there are some people out there who are way smarter than me that have done some pretty incredible things with shortcuts. You can actually find shortcuts in libraries and things out there where other people have created. You know, you can download and tweak these yourself for your needs. It's a great way to kind of learn what these shortcuts can do. Oh yeah, I did mention in the beginning a special tip that I wanted to share. You're going to love this if you didn't already know about it. You can actually run shortcuts or do a number of other things just by double tapping or triple tapping the back of your iPhone. All you need to do is go to your settings, go to accessibility, uh, tap on touch right here. You're going to scroll to the bottom. You're going to see back tap and here you'll have double tap and triple tap that you can set up. We'll choose triple tap. And here you can do all these things, accessibility, scroll gestures, but the cool stuff is here is shortcuts. So here is all of my created shortcuts and I can have any of these shortcuts run when I triple tap the back of my iPhone. So I'm gonna look for that one that I created earlier today called nighttime shortcuts. Boom, now if I triple tap the back of my phone, it's gonna run that shortcut. You know that first one that I created earlier today for me to use when my wife is already asleep and I'm gonna be going to bed. Since I usually have my phone in hand when I go to bed, I figured this would be perfect for this. Let's give it a shot. One, two, three. Boom, look at that running my shortcut that we created. Now, if you were really into this, again, be sure to check out some of those past videos in my shortcuts and automations playlist you can find right here. Also hit that like button below if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already for new HomeKit videos like this every Sunday. And consider hitting that join button below to become a channel member and get some cool perks like early access to new videos before anyone else and our members only discord group where we are talking all things home kit and smart home. Thanks so much for joining me today and until next time we'll see y'all later.